Hi there. <laughs> I hope your weekend was good. We had a storm and lots of rain and Matthew's discovered that because he's English, he's used to being indoors. <laughs> so um, the wind was mighty strong, I have to say. Tonight we're going to discuss the quality of compassion. I was watching a summit, a free summit this afternoon that was to do with, what did they call it? The oh, science and wisdom of emotions. Dalai Lama had a lot to do with setting this up because it is something that we really um, need to deal with, particularly right now. There is so much um, panic and fear and need to understand um, how to work with that. And I found it incredibly um, inspiring, I have to say. It's, it's like there's something about compassion, but I just n never understood quite what it was or how to get there or how can our emotions be so volatile. And I don't know about you, but I certainly have tried over the years to find various different aspects, tools of how to work with my emotions. And some of those emotions will take you far away into a pit and um, a deep hole. And some of them will bring bliss to you. Ultimately, it's um, compassion that will stabilize it because hold it, grabbing onto the emotions and things isn't an easy task. And there are solutions to this. And I want to share with you some of the things that um, I have learned over the years, practice, um, and a few little things that I learned this morning <laughs> from a wonderful Tibetan monk. So I'm going to check out who's here and if anyone has anything to say yet and give me a minute I'll tune in hi Angela Donald Lillian Lily Juliet Verpe that's fine Verpe just knowing that you're there is wonderful Hi, Apple, Isabel, Yvonne and Becky, great, Cindy, we've got quite a wonderful group building here. Did I say Lisa? Hi, Lisa, if I didn't. <laughs> Okay. Hi, Becky. <laughs> I know Becky. She said she's been spring cleaning all day and wondered why do we as humans collect so many items like squirrels. I totally understand. This squirrel's going to have to start reducing a few things. <laughs> You'll probably see me on eBay quite a lot in coming up because I really want to do that. But let's um, continue with the topic for the evening. There's um, a wonderful meditation. It's actually more like a visualization that I want to take you through tonight in regards to how to develop compassion, because as I was saying, the emotions are 
not so easy. They're like wild broncos often. And it is with training, compassion training, that is one of the main ways of dealing with this. So, I mean, we all want to love and care. And sometimes though, those emotions just won't um, go along with it. So the um, Tibetan Buddhists, they have something called the training of compassion. And what it deals with is it's really important to be aware of your triggers. And often what we do is because the West particularly are involved with the righteousness of mental thinking. Often we just put them away, the emotions. Oh my God, she's being silly today. And oh my God, I, uh, why do I think like that? You know, what is it? Well, a lot of times these emotions are like notifications. It's bing, bing. Awaken, look, there's something here you have to pay attention to. And it's a really good thing often, but we don't know how to pay attention to them. So we often put them away in judgment. Or we try desperately to change it with our rational mind. But the Tibetans who have done a lot of um, practice over the years, the science of emotions, different to the West, we're sort of catching up in a way, but the Tibetans really have focused on it a lot. And what we have to do is look first off at our mindset, see if we can catch the way we think, the perceptions, the judgments, the, the theories and all. Are you open to see that? And then another thing that's important, and we'll talk about this more later, is your intention. What is your real intention? What do you really feel? And they encourage us just, and I uh, learned this in being with my Sufi teacher, Irina Tweedy, that you need to let it be there. Don't edit, don't judge it, just look at it instead of hiding it. And then you can um, put empathy on it. Start to love your monsters. Because often they're all there because we're frightened to death either of them, mainly because we're worried about what other people think about us. And of course we're social beings. We want to be close to each other. We want to be accepted. But I think it's time for the world to start having a different um, viewpoint about, excuse me, <coughs> categorizing people, putting labels. We need to find unity and diversity and rejoice in our differences. Even to ourselves, we have to rejoice of who we are. Because I firmly believe, and I've said this before, the heart of the humanity is pure. So it's um, a bit of a paradox dealing with compassion about caring for the world, caring for someone else and things, because it's something very good for you. And the byproduct is um, care for yourself. But the beginning passage is um, quite a challenge because the ego um, wants to hang on. 
they, it thinks that um, that image, that all those perceptions and everything that you've gathered is who you are. And it's um, quite imp important to make the ego your tool for you to be the controller, for you to manifest and totally possible, for you to not be a victim to those thoughts, to those patterns. And I hope that um, the talking through the, I wonder what's, what's going on with my voice. <coughs> Very strange. And I didn't bring a drink. But never mind, I hope you bear with me. I'm going to um, look at your messages. <laughs> Thank you, Lily. Hi, Michael. Hi, Doreen. I hope you're there behind your wonderful husband. I watched his um, live last night on KPFK Radio. That was very wonderful. Hi, Cindy. She thinks it's wonderful. Yeah, Becky. House cleaning clears the space. And I, I think every spring it's time. It sort of calls us to start doing that. Yep. They do take up a lot of mental space, even the thought every time I walk past thinking, oh, I've got to dust that, <laughs> all those photos. Um, so I know what you mean. Erica feels cleaner, less messy. Becky says, go get a drink, you'll wait. Well, that's quite a hike. I think, I'll, well, maybe you're right because this journey I want to take you on, I don't want to be coughing in it. So hang on, talk to each other. I'll be right back. Okay, I have returned. Right, that's better. <laughs> Hi, Lynn. Intermission. <laughs> He's Juliet. He's cooking me dinner. It's making me hungry. <laughs> Smells really good. He's a really good cook. Yeah, gardening is great. To tune in to nature is like so important. Um, Now, 
<laughs> Thank you, Lily. I often have decaffeinated, caf decaffeinated, pardon me, Earl Grey with lavender. Yum. Water is a bit quicker, <laughs> but I might have some later. Right. So, let's do this journey. So, um, I need you to close your eyes and be still. I am going to put up a video um, but you'll probably have your eyes closed but I'm sure some of you might sneak a peek <laughs> please you probably can do this watching this video as well it's up to you i will talk you through it let me transition it just making sure my mic's working i'm going to check with you first if you tell me if you can hear me. Matthew said I should do that before I do anything. <laughs> Hi, Veronica. Thank you for coming. We're talking about compassion and we're about to start a journey. And I uh, thank you, Erica. That's what we need to know. Thank you, Isabel. So for anyone coming late, we're talking about compassion and our emotions and how compassion serves to still our minds and open our hearts and bring lots of love. So thank you all. I want you to um, sit back, get a comfortable position Relax. Make sure your spine is erect. No slouching. Be alert. I want you to pay attention to your breath. I want you to take in a breath. Hold it and let it out. Take a breath, hold it, and let it out. One more. Breathe. Breathe in, hold it, and let it out. Return to your natural breath. Don't let it be too slow or too fast. Just let it be the natural breath. Notice the energy flowing down through your body. through your head, through your arms, your shoulders, your stomach, your pelvis, your legs, your feet. Now switch your attention 
from paying attention to that and just relax, just be. Now I want you to ask a question to yourself silently. What is it I wish from the depth of my heart for myself from life? Be still. Observe what comes. Happiness, peace, love, unity. Just observe what comes. And if nothing comes, just allow the question to be there. Now ask the question, what is it I wish from the depth of my heart for my loved ones? Is it peace? Is it happiness? Health? Tranquility? Love? Allow it to come. Allow it to be there. Keep it to yourself for the moment. We have one more question. What is it I wish from the depth of my heart for the world? Is it peace? Is it unity? Economic stability? Health? Equality? Allow those questions to be there without editing. Observe how maybe it's the same for yourself and your loved ones. And every person I think you'll find has a similar wish. And we are one in the universe. So unity of being human. Now I'd like us to say a new phrase, a new thought, a blessing. Let's focus on everyone on the live and repeat, may we from the depth of our hearts continue to care for each other. And in that open your heart more Next, send a blessing to 
to the country that you live in. May we, from the depth of our hearts, find joy and freedom from suffering. Allow the thought to go deeper into your heart. May we find joy together. Finally, let's together focus on the entire world, including ourselves. May we, from the depths of our hearts, all be free of suffering. Pay attention to your breath. Feel where your body is connected to the earth, your feet, your legs your hands. Most of all, be aware of the peace within you at this moment. Open your eyes. Thank you. It's a, a really good exercise that deepens your awareness with your contact with the world and each other and yourself. Don't forget about you. <laughs> it's like the moment your heart opens, there's such a tenderness and an ease to care for another. It's one of the um, special things about being human, actually. Animals care, but we um, can do it with strangers if we let ourselves, if we allow our hearts to trust. And it's really important to um, Find an intention. The um, Buddhist monks, the Tibetan monks that I was listening to today, what they do in the morning is that they um, offer up. They look at what, how you're thinking in the morning and then they say, they see a quality that you want to work with. So. Today I am going to bring joy to my life. Or even today I will um, hug my beautiful monsters. <laughs> you know, those the anger and the tendency to not be happy. Because as I said earlier, you need to be aware of these things in order to work with them. Time for a drink. The beautiful, <clears throat> excuse me. Mm. The beautiful thing about compassion, it gives you a sense of purpose. Whether it's I'm going to in love myself and love beings all around. I'm going to check what you guys are saying now and ladies. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you enjoyed that. 
There's something else that I want to take us through. It's almost like um, healing, what I used to do and still do with absent healing for other people. And I want you to um, do that tonight. So um, again, find a comfortable position and close your eyes. Breathe in, hold it, breathe out, breathe in, hold it, and breathe out, breathe in, hold it, and breathe out. This time, if you know a person that's suffering, it might even be yourself, or it might be a world situation, whatever it is, bring it in focus. And silently make an offering by saying, the following. May you find peace. May you find courage. May you find assurance. May you be free from suffering. And most of all, may you retain hope. May all beings be free. Come back. To your body and your breath. When you're ready, open your eyes. Perhaps somebody would like to share with me how that was. It feels very much, Angela, that the energy has gone out. Kimberly says that whoever is concerned, she just got home from the hospital and she put two messages on Facebook, but she doesn't know if I saw it. Nope, I haven't seen it. Perhaps you would um, let us know what it was. <laughs> Becky. I know what you mean. She wants to move <laughs> to another body. Hers is not serving her very well. That is quite a challenge, I must say. But I, when I feel like that with my growing elder body, I just think of Stephen Hawkins. And I know it's not pleasant when you're limited, but the heart's never limited. I 
our expectations can be challenging, that's for sure. There was a time in the last few months I could barely get up the stairs. I don't know why that was happening, but I've been to physio, it's getting better. I can actually walk up the stairs and down the stairs without holding on. So I'm very blessed for the moment and grateful. But there was a time I thought, am I going to be like this forever until I pass on? And if it was the case, I would have to find that bliss spot. And I'm here, Becky, to listen anytime you need me. Lily has a door in her vision. Is the door open? Can you see beyond the door? Juliet, I'm very happy. I can feel you smiling. <laughs> and I would recommend doing this often for everybody because the world needs us to think, to love, to co have compassion, for our hearts to be open no matter what the limitation might be. Lily's crying now because her door isn't open. Well, I would suggest you work with that. And maybe um, you could ask, may my door be open to the beauty of my heart. Because Lily, you have a very beautiful heart. Almost everybody I know on here is open their hearts and we're sharing this. So from the depth of my heart, may you all be well. Doreen, thank you very much. I love both of you very much. <laughs> Lily, if you want to share it, please let me know. You can private message me if it's um, something you need to go deeper in. That's wonderful, Angela. I'm sure you do. I can feel it. I'm very grateful. Isabel said for Lily, sometimes a door must be closed for a new one to open. And sometimes a door closes for a new one to open. <laughs> Very beautiful, Yvonne. She had a feeling of relief and inner peace, calming and soothing and she saw nature, sun shining through green leaves. Thank you so much. I want to let you know that that um, Zoom lesson about the being of opening the heart will be up so that you can sign in soon. And I want to show you something. Part of what, let me see if you can see this. One of the things that you will be doing is little tiny dots. Let's put that up here. Can you see it? Thank you, Juliet. That was the purpose, to feel love and peace. <laughs> here we go. You can finally see this. I'm going to put it closer. It's got... Can you see the little tiny, tiny dots of clay? Up oh, we go. There we go. 
You see that? Well, the first thing that you will be doing in this being of heart is to make one of those slowly tiny little dots tiny little dots and you're not allowed to press it you have to just build it slowly 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 and what it represents is the universal aspect of life so you'll feel it growing and spreading out and maybe yours will be in your hand and you can hold it. You'll grow. And you'll slowly go in and feel the peace of the universe of life. And eventually, something starts to grow, and energy inside will start to push out. And the energy from outside will push in. And eventually, a shape, a form will be born. So this Zoom class will be um, probably three to four hours. And the only thing you have to get is something like this. I know that um, Amazon sells these things so if you can't get to an art shop it will deliver it and we have a time delay here da -da -da, there we are clay this particular clay dries eventually and then you can paint it and afterwards once you uh, have experience the form that is to be born. As I said before, I've done it in Hawaii and Doreen and Michael, who's listening tonight, was there and they created theirs. And I loved watching everyone, what they go through and being able to help. Because you think it's really something easy. But... Um, It's a process. It's another way of tuning in to our hearts. And some people, it's a challenge to open up, but if you feel safe, I hope we can create an environment where you feel safe and it will become. So Julia asked, when will the Zoom start? <laughs> Well, we hope to put up the um, link tomorrow, with any luck. I did a little mini video inviting you, and my team will do the rest. <laughs> it's really fascinating watching um, your own universe being born and the size of it and how your hands will hold it and how you have to resist not pounding to make a circle. It's tiny, I love it, the tiny, tiny little bits of clay and you have to trust and let it grow and observe it and turn it around and make the universe the perfection of the universe so more than likely i don't know what to do about the timing of this whether maybe you can advise should we do it 
Saturdays? Should we do it Sundays? Should we do it evenings in the week? Not on Wednesday or Matt's Tuesday. Actually, not Sunday because that's Matt's day. What do you think? What time do you think would be um, great? And maybe I'll put up two different days because of the time difference of people around the world. Well, Yvonne, it is very nurturing. And it'd be lovely to share it with all of you. <laughs> Any thoughts about what's a good day? Hi, Kimberly. How are you actually? So Erica says weekday evenings, she works weekends. Angela says Zooms with a replay link to catch up. Okay. Any other ideas? I think because I love doing it so much and I know that we have different people have different hours. I'll talk to my team and see if we can give a few choices. Juliet, when do you, th Juliet, maybe Friday evening, early. What's early? Would you th Saturday evening or afternoon for Yvonne? Okay. This is really helpful, thank you. Yes, Kimberly, I totally agree. But we have to open our own hearts and be, radiate the compassion and see how, um, you know, humanity's forgetting. They, when there's so much hardship in the world, they, so much panic and so much fear that we close off. And we need to find a way that within ourselves to hold our hearts open. Okay, so Angela says we can all enjoy and set aside a time for ourselves in our diaries. <laughs> Angela, Friday mate date, okay. Or Monday, Juliet says, but it'd be six or seven. But you'll have to set aside three hours. Because you'll have to go slow. Becky, Matthew does his lives on Sunday and we have in this house decided that that's his day. Okay, Juliet, maybe Friday is a good idea for sure. Anyway, I'll talk to my team and we'll come up with a few choices. And the one thing about um, it being at six or seven is that people in California, other parts of the world can join in. So Yvonne says Friday. Yep, Lisa, that's what I was saying. Matt does his live on Sunday at seven and it's his day just like today is my day <laughs> and he cooks for me and on Sunday I have dinner waiting for him as well so we work together it's really great very special maybe Saturday. You know, Becky, I might do one Friday and I might do one Saturday. Karen, are you flexible for a Friday? And what about a Monday? 
because it might be that we give a choice, several choices, and then you can choose what is a good day for you. So, um, it's getting to be that point of the evening. <laughs> Thanks, Juliet. Team Mon, Mom and Matt. <laughs> Yeah, you should see. I have this balcony upstairs. It's a converted barn. And there's a balcony that you cross to get to my bedroom or you get to the other part of the house. And that crossover point is um, Matthew Central. <laughs> and it works really well for him. Okay, Karen is Friday and Monday is fine for her. Okay. So Matthew's got his green curtains up. That's why he can do all those um, images, all the colors. Thank you, Becky. That's a good idea. Morrissey says, every day is like a Sunday. Totally. Every day is a day to live compassion. Open our hearts. So, keep an eye out. We will um, put it up. As I said, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. Yes, Becky, he's come back. He is back because um, of COVID and he wants to sell his flat. But because of COVID, the, the um, English government is not allowing um, landlords to give um, short notice understandably so you have to give six months notice so Matthew had let go of his flat in Texas and he's home yep I love Matthew's music. I love all the people that are supporting him. And you know, it's like COVID in a strange way and him being on his own helped him to develop a particular way of creating life often. And um, he's still perfecting it. But within those jams and things, isn't it amazing what he's coming up with? I mean, some of those jams just take you into another world. And we trust him and we go in it. And, you know, he says, oh, I'm not perfect. I made some mistakes. I said, listen, you just conquered your limitation. You could have... That, those, you, you all know that li, who listen to them, how adventuresome and courageous he is. And I said to him, I know how that feels because I do these painting live and um, you start not knowing anything. And it takes a lot of courage to have people watching, to trust and let the creative process take over. And um, I, we've created quite a few on those. Let me show you the latest one in case. I know Juliet, his, it's like we're taken to another universe. So here we are, the third um, live painting. Hi, Garnet. Oops, something happened. What happened? OK. 
Can you see this? Have a good. Here we are. There is such a delay on these things, but at least it was clearer than what Matthew had to go through. This is um, the third one that became, she's going to be called um, Sophia. And I'll put her on Art Pal soon so that you can buy a print of her or you can actually buy her. Um, thank you, Lisa. I know, Becky, it's the first time I froze. And oh, I suppose we're lucky. We are lucky because just sending a message. Internet has been naughty, this is true, but I think we're lucky tonight. And um, I have to say, so long. Thank you for all coming. And we're just building compassion together. And may we, from the depth of our hearts, continue to care for each other in the world. Just to let you know, we've got the BTs coming over to check out what's wrong with the lines. And hopefully by next week, we won't have these little experiences, particularly for Mac. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> you should smell what is cooking from through the walls. It's <laughs> so thank you again for coming. And see you soon, maybe Friday for the live painting or next Wednesday or Matthew on Sunday. Be well. Night. Bye.